Breeden for his statement, and I give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation. Mr. President, we would like to thank the UN Secretary General, Antony Guterres, for participating personally in our meeting and for his very uh, thorough briefing on this subject. The aspects touched upon today by the Bolivian presidency concerning state sovereignty over natural resources are extremely important and, as was quite rightly noted, they are visible in many regional conflicts today. At the same time, strictly speaking, these matters go beyond the purview of the UN Security Council and fall under the mandates of the high-level political forum on sustainable development and the Second Committee of the UN General Assembly. In the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, UN member states once again reaffirmed that each of them has the full constant sovereignty over all of their riches, natural resources, and economic activity, and has the right to freely exercise that sovereignty. In accordance with this principle, Combating illegal activities in the extractive industries is also the prerogative and obligation, first and foremost, of the governments of the countries that own those resources. In this respect, a priority is providing assistance to vulnerable states, helping them to strengthen state institutions and to apply sustainable models of the use of natural resources in the interests of the socio-economic development of those countries and trade. Security Council Resolution 1625 of 2005 and the presidential statement 2007 stroke 22 set the parameters for further work to prevent the financing and feeding of armed conflicts through the illegal exploitation of natural resources. Here we think the council's job is not generic discussions but rather ensuring strict compliance with the principles of sovereignty and the non-interference in the internal affairs of specific countries and regions. We believe it is unacceptable that these matters be politicized, artificially suggesting that they generate conflicts and thereby creating a basis for potential crises or the exacerbation of existing crises. We see many examples of how natural resources are becoming something to compete over, in particular when these become armed in nature, both within states and between them. As a rule, these phenomena are seen in countries with a very low level of state control over the nation's subsoils and soils. At the same time, armed conflict, whether internal or international, can exacerbate problems related to the illegal exploitation of those. We would like to underscore that these confrontations are caused not by natural resources as such, but by the aggressive actions of forces which are often external players. Mr. President, a sizable negative role in such cases is played by the ticking time bombs that were laid during the colonial era. The schemes for looting these territories under their control that were created at that time were applied by the former metropoles during the Cold War as well. And in our age, behind the belligerent parties in conflicts, often there are players from without, outside the region and global corporations standing behind them. And loud slogans about the fight for democratic values really only are a cover for the mercantile desire to get one's hands on the natural resources of a particular country. We believe that the discussion on this subject should be applied to the situations of specific countries and regions. For example, the, ri the region of the Middle East and North Africa, which is rich in oil and gas resources and stocks, has always been an area of competition for the big states. The energy factor largely led to the beginning of the age of upheaval, which was in error called the Arab Spring. The current crisis situations in Syria and Libya are a clear demonstration of the increasing link between security and the global competition for resources. The so-called international coalition, 
which is active on Syrian territory without the invitation of the national government or authorization from the UN Security Council, has occupied territory east of the Euphrates along with the oil and gas deposits that are located there. And along with structures that are under their thumb, thumb, they have essentially set up a shadow system for the extraction of hydrocarbons. Before our eyes, they are attempting to strengthen this state of affairs, undermining the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Syria. Libya, following the aggressive actions committed against it in 2011, became a bridgehead in the struggle of external players for its rich natural resources and is continuing to be in a state of fragmentation in spite of all of the UN's efforts to come up with a model for political settlement based on unifying the country and its state institutions. We would very much like to hope that the, this natural wealth would serve the interests of ordinary Libyans rather than foreign corporations. You don't have to go very far to find other examples in the Middle East. The destabilization of Iraq following the foreign invasion in 2003, the war in Yemen as well. And yet in both of those cases, in both of those countries, at a certain point, terrorist forces gained access to natural resources and they used them, primarily hydrocarbons, to finance their destructive activities. Mr. President, one of the reasons of the ongoing turbulence in the east of the Democratic Republic of the Congo is the illegal exploitation and export of natural resources in the interests of major TNCs, which is being used by illegal armed groups to finance their activities. Putting a stop to this activity would create the preconditions for stabilizing the situation in the country and for its steady development. The issue of dividing up the revenues from oil and other natural resources extraction is a major factor that feeds ten trends and hinders the federalization process in Somalia. The June 2018 agreement between Mogadishu and the federal states concerning the rights to ownership, management and distribution of revenues from natural resources is an extremely important factor. However, there are ongoing doubts over the readiness of the parties to implement these agreements. A potential source of interstate conflicts could be problems of exercising supremacy over natural resources in the context of the delimitation of maritime and land borders, and there are many examples of this in Africa. Just look at the situation concerning the ownership of major oil and gas deposits in the coastal areas of the Gulf of Guinea or the non-recognition of existing borders by many of the tribes in the Sahara Sahel region, which take up arms to defend rights to natural resources. Another clear example is the situation in South Sudan, the natural resources of which is something that both internal and external players are shamelessly trying to get their hands on. Mr. President, an equally destabilizing factor of equal importance in a number of states of Latin America is the action of some states and transnational corporations that want to gain access to the resource base of countries in the region. Unfortunately, in the 21st century, not a great deal has changed. The situation surrounding Venezuela and Nicaragua is perfect proof of this. Attributing all problems to the rich resources of countries, which are subjected to open pressure and interference from outside, including sanctions, and blaming this on the poor management of natural resources is something that we think is dangerous and short-sighted. Framing the question this way is really a step away from direct military intervention. And this is a lesson that we can easily learn from history, although many do not want to learn that lesson. The Russian Federation consistently calls and underlines the need for the strict respect for the sovereign right of states to dispose of their natural resources. Partnerships to exploit them must be mutually beneficial and be based on the unquestioned respect of the sovereignty of the host state. Those who claim to be peacemakers and friends must not have any hidden agenda or 
want to use other people's problems for their own mercenary and self-serving interests. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. And